This lesson is about how to use the iReal Pro app. Now, there's a lot of videos giving instruction, great instruction, great details about all the aspects of the iReal Pro app, how to download it, all the wonderful things that it does. What I'm doing is aiming this at my students who ask me how to use the iReal Pro app, and most of my students are adult learners who aren't used to downloading new applications and then learning how to use them and trying to work their way through the functions to find out really just what they need to use the app for. We've got a bass player and drum in that app that gives us a rhythm section so we can practice playing piano with the bass player and drums at any tempo and in any key. So we just want to learn how to do that when we're studying. I'll show you how to use the app for practicing your basic simple jazz chords that you use to play standards with. Now the app kind of challenges you. You get to test yourself to see how well you know the chords for any song that you're working on. And we'll see how to get started making fills and solos using the app to drive our practice. The app has a very large selection of songs, standards and jazz tunes. It's got some 1500 tunes loaded into it. We select the tune that we want to work with and it's got all of the chord changes written out for the song, and we can transpose these chords into any key at the touch of a button. One of its primary functions is a very useful ability to serve as a play-along device. It has a built-in rhythm section that we can use on any of the songs that are in the catalog. We can start it up and play along with it. Here it goes, it gives us a count off. We can have the rhythm section play at any speed we want to and a variety of different styles so we can practice the songs while the rhythm section is backing us up. The rhythm section has a piano, bass, and drums. Since we're studying piano, we can remove the piano and just be left with a bass and drums to play with. So we can go ahead and, and fill in the piano part. Now we just have the bass and drums playing so we can supply the piano part ourselves. What's really exciting and extremely useful to us is that this robotic rhythm section, it's like a metronome. Now, if you've ever played classical piano and tried to work on your scales, arpeggios, or any classical music that you're working on, you're used to working with a metronome. But a metronome is kind of boring. Let's see how that would sound if we had just a metronome playing. So this is giving us a metronome to practice. That's pretty boring. But what the creator of the iReal Pro app has done for us is given us an entire rhythm section instead of just a metronome. So when we're practicing, we get inspired and driven along to keep focusing while we have this rhythm section playing for us. And the program lights up with every bar that it comes to, so it helps keep us on track while we're studying or playing. So this insistent rhythm section that keeps driving us and keeps us focused it turns into almost like a game. It's a challenge for us to continue on with the rhythm section, try to keep up with it and not disappoint ourselves and fall off the track and forget where we are. So we wanna know all of our chords as we play along with the rhythm section. And that's where it becomes very useful to us because when you're studying the songs that you work with in my lessons or with anybody's lessons, the first thing you want to do when you're picking up a new song to study is learn the chords all by themselves. Make sure you can play the chords before you start to add melody to it. And that's where this is going to be very valuable to us. If I asked you to play all of the chords in this song and you're just learning your chords, you could go through them slowly and play them one at a time, taking your time to play each one. And then after you think you've got them under your fingers and you can play them, 
then you can test yourself to see how well you know them by having the rhythm section start up and see if you can play while the rhythm section is playing it back at you. So the app gives us an opportunity to challenge ourselves to see how well we're doing with our practice. And we can set the rhythm section to play at any speed. So if this speed's too fast, we can slow it down. We can slow it way down to get it to a speed that we can handle and play the chords that we've been practicing. This program was developed for jazz players, for jazz students, and for experienced jazz players as well. For jazz students, it helps the students stay focused and practice different jazz skills as they start to develop. For us pros, we use it for our own warm-up and our own practice, but also out on gigs, we can use it when we're working with other musicians and we want to get coordinated with them, or when we're working with singers especially, and we want to put songs in different keys. It's a very powerful and versatile amp, and the creator of this app keeps evolving and adding things to it and making it more sophisticated. Now, the first thing you'll see is that it's only chords. There's no melody in here. If you want the melody, you've got to get it out of a fake book, unless you can play it by ear yourself. It's a digital fake book playing chord charts only for all of this big list of standards. The fact that it's playing chords only actually works to our advantage in a big way because we can just concentrate, focus on the chords in the song and not get distracted by trying to put the melody with the chords right away. And this is the way that we start with all of my lessons is by just learning the chords and getting very secure with the chords, making sure you can play them first before you start to try to put the melody with them. There's a lot to learn about this app. It goes in so many different directions and can be used in so many different ways. But I'm just going to be talking about a few of its functions that we can use to help us with our studies. Let's take a look to see how the iReal Pro is going to work in action for us as a rhythm section. Now, I'm going to play Old Lady Be Good. I've got that on my lesson for playing from a fake book series. Just here's how it sounds. Uh, I'm just going to start it up to show you something. And here we start out. I've got the piano in here now. So I'm going to stop it. Now, if you're new to trying to play with uh, an application like this, you might find it a little daunting at first to be making your chords and playing along with this rhythm section because first you've got to learn your chords uh, to every song and so you're going to be thinking about how to make the chord while your rhythm section is going along and you're trying to keep up with it. So what we're going to do here is start by just playing one single note in your left hand and then that single note is going to be the root note of every chord. So first see if you can just manage that as we go along and then we'll add more to it as we go but you just want to see if you can just keep going with the rhythm section. So here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm just playing a root note for every chord. Okay, and if you make a mistake, that's okay. Just keep going and uh, try to catch up to it. The highlighted bar will always tell you where you should be. But now if this is too fast, slow it down. I'm playing at 121 now. Let's, let's say that's too fast. We're just going to slow it down. I'm going to go down here to like 88 and start it again here. So you can go really slow. Take all the time you want. Three, four, one. And I'm going to play the F to the B flat. So give yourself as much time, as much time as you need. You can always speed it up or slow it down. Okay, so that's your first, your first step is to do that. Now, if you've already played with chords, you're going to think that's too elementary, but for those of you that have never used it before, I think you'll find that might help to get oriented to this whole process. 
Now let me point out something here. I'm playing with my Bose speaker here, any speaker that you've got uh, that you can attach to your device, whether it's your computer or your pad. I'm using uh, uh, my phone here. You want to run the app with using a speaker because if you don't and you just use your phone or your computer, whatever, it's not going to sound very good. You won't hear the bass. It'll just be a very soft sound. But when you use an external speaker, um, then you hear the bass pop out and you've got something to play with. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. Let's look at the chord notations. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with these, I'm just going to go over them briefly. The triangle always means major 7 in jazz, so that's your clue to play a major 7. Then, of course, just a regular 7 is a dominant 7. The dash means minor 7. It's really typical uh, musical shorthand these days to use, use things like this. And the circle means diminished, so we've got a B diminished 7 here. And the circle with the line through it means minor 7 flat 5. And the slang for that is half diminished. It means minor 7 flat 5. And of course here we've got A7 flat 9. These two chords are usually found together in our minor jazz patterns. And it is a 2-5-1 minor jazz pattern if you've worked with that lesson or if you're familiar with how that works. Okay, so that's generally the notations. And you want to get used to those. So now the next step, after you've got the ability together to stay up with the program using just your left hand, then you're going to want to add the chords in your right hand. And we're going to play the chords. Uh, you can play them in any inversion you want if you're capable of doing that. Uh, if you're capable of doing it just sometimes, that's great. If not, just start out playing root position. So we've got our F major 7 chord. Just like we do with the lessons in the Playing From a Fake Book series, we start by just going through all the chords first. F major 7 up to B flat 7 and go through all the chords F major 7 B flat 7 again down to A minor 7 then to D7 in any registered for now it doesn't matter where you hit it then G minor 7 C7 down to F6 and if you can manage the inversions it's great uh, by the inversions so I mean there's the F major 7 I would fold it down to a B flat 7 instead of jumping up and back to F major 7, fold it down. Then the A minor 7 I might hit like this. The inversion of the A minor 7, and from here I might just go to the closest inversion I can get to, D7. Then G minor 7 might look like that, inverted. So those are using the inversions, but that depends on your ability to make inversions at whatever point in your learning process and studies you're at. So I'm going to run it again very slowly. Uh, I've, I've got to think at 88 beats per minute, so it's going to be pretty slow. And I'm going to try to add, well, I'm going to do it, but you can try to add the chord with the bass note. Now I'm going to roll the piano out because I'm going to be playing the piano. And take it back to the beginning, and here we go. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Minus seven, D seven, G minus seven, C seven, F six, D minus seven. I'll use inversions this time. It doesn't matter if you use inversions or not. You're just trying to get your hands on the chords. A minus seven, D seven, G minus seven, C seven. Now we're in the second ending on the way to the bridge. B flat major seven. And so on like that. So that that's gonna be your first step, just to go through and try to get the chord and the bass note playing along with the rhythm section. And if that's too fast, slow it down more. You can always put this down wherever you want it. You can get it way down into the 70s or the 50s, as slow as it takes. What we're doing is trying to play with the rhythm section 
in order to help our practice. It propels our practice. If you don't play with the rhythm section and you're just playing the chords, uh, you might lose your concentration and you might get impatient and, and you know, uh, you might jump to something else. But if we've got this rhythm section playing for us, it's like a game. We're, we're trying to stay up to the game and challenge ourselves to follow the chords at whatever set tempo that we establish for ourselves. So it helps keep us going and propel our practice, I like to say. For a next step, I would say let's do something different with our left hand. Because our left hand, we have a choice of doing the most common moves that we make with our left hand are to play a single root note, like we've just done, or to play a fifth or a seventh in the left hand, or an octave, but usually it's a single root note, root note, a fifth or a seventh, and sometimes a third. So those are the regular choices, root note, fifth, seventh, third. So let's go through, and I'm, this time I'm going to play it with sevenths all the way through. At a nice slow tempo, let's see where I'm at here, tempo 94, that's, well, I'm going to take it down even further. So you want to take it down to a tempo you can really manage. And by sevenths, it's either going to be a major seven or a minor seven. And when you get to the diminished chord, I'm going to recommend just playing a root note. It, it could be um, the top and bottom notes of the diminished chord, but uh, just play a, a root note, it'll make your life simpler. So I'm going to play like on the F major 7, I'll play a major 7. So, and if you don't know where your 7s are, make an octave and a major 7, you're going to come down a half a step from the top note of the octave. When I go to B flat 7, if you don't know where your 7th is, go to the octave, come down a whole step. So down a whole step for dominant 7 and minor 7 chords, and down a half step for major 7 chords. Here we just repeat what we did. A minor 7, D7, and again in any range, don't worry about the range that you're going to play in, just trying to get the 7th going. And the F6, you can play a 6th or just play a root note, make your life easy, uh, or if you want you can play the 6th, but if it challenges you, just play the root note, D minor 7, G minor 7, C7, and so forth. So um, this is just for training, get your left hand working in a common move that you're going to use a lot. I use the open seventh maybe more than anything else in my left hand. So I think it's it's very worthwhile to get used to that. So let's go through this again, and I'm going to play the seventh as I go along. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three. F major seven. B flat 7, F major 7, B flat 7, A minor 7, D7, seven, G7, seven. back to the top. Take the second ending. Let's see what happens in the bridge. F6, C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7. Now they B diminished, I'll just play the single note. F major 7, now to E minor 7 flat 5. It's an open 7, open 7, and so forth like that. Now that process is really just an exercise because you wouldn't play open sevenths through an entire song or an entire section of a song like that, but you'll use it frequently. Let me give you a little demonstration how I would play in a natural manner. I'm not gonna think about this hardly at all. Just watch what my left hand does here. And I'm gonna play the chords in my right hand. I know all of my inversions, so I don't have to think about that. But what I'm gonna do is use this combination of things, the, the sevenths, You'll see me play a fifth sometimes, and you'll see me play a third sometimes. So by a third, I mean on the F major 7, I might do that. On a B flat, I might do that. 
the D, I might, uh, the A minus seven, I might do that, or the D seven. So it's a combination of things. So now just kind of look at my left hand. I'm gonna walk through the, the chords here without using the uh, rhythm machine yet. So I'll start out with the F major seven. Now the B flat seven, going back to F major seven. I'm using a one five now, B flat seven. I'm going to the A minor seven. I'm gonna fold to a three. G minor seven, fold to the third. Now the F six, D minor seven. Now I've got a fifth in my left hand. The seventh, I've got a fifth in my left hand. So I'm always using one of these things in my left hand. I'm gonna go through the changes again, and I want you to just watch my left hand. I'm gonna set the tempo up a little bit higher. I'll put it up around 95 or something like that. And in case you're wondering, uh, now I've got the phone tipped in this position and you see all the chord changes, but when I turn it like this, like I've been demonstrating, you don't get all the changes. You just get uh, a few lines at a time. And uh, they scroll though as you're playing. Everything scrolls down so you don't miss anything. Okay, so just watch my left hand and don't worry about my right hand because I'm just going to play the chords in any inversion, but I want you to see what my left hand does. Just playing open sevenths, fifths, and thirds, sometimes a root note. And this is the normal sort of thing that happens when you're playing tunes, when you're reading through changes. It's just the normal basic left hand. Okay, here we go. So that's the idea. Um, just playing as I normally would. Just the, so the left hand, just doing those simple moves. Uh, a lot of students try to always wonder what the heck's going on in the left hand. And there's not a lot going on down there when you're just playing in a normal, easygoing fashion. Now something else that you're gonna to wanna to do is to just hum the melody while you're playing through the changes. So you really keep the song in mind. Let me turn up the tempo just a little bit more, get it up to about uh, 107 or something like that. And I'm just going to hum the melody. You don't have to be a great singer. I really impress this upon all my students and all my lessons. Keep the tune going in your head and sing it to yourself. Hum it to yourself quietly. Uh, most of my students say, well, I'm not a singer. I don't want to do that. I don't sing well or something like that. But that's not the idea. The idea is to connect to the song. And if you're not playing the melody, if you don't hear the melody, nobody's playing it for you. And where is the song? So just hum it to yourself lightly. You don't have to be a singer at all. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Bye, do do da do Yes, lady, be good. Bye, body, dee. pa I just hum it, whatever, just to yourself. Kind of thing. So you, you got the tune 
in your head, and it's not just a bunch of chord changes intellectually played. It's really important. Now, of course, if you do sing, if you're a singer or you like to sing, then you'll enjoy singing the whole song while you're playing the chords. But for a lot of people just starting out, they think it's difficult to sing and play at the same time. But it's a skill you develop, of course. If you want to sing and just have fun with it, the iRo Pro is, really offers a lot of great uh, opportunities this way. Uh, you can sing along with it using the whole rhythm section. Let me put the piano back in here. I'm going to roll our piano up. So now I've got the piano, bass, and drums to play with. And I'm going to start it up again here. And I'm not even going to play piano. I'm going to just sing along with the iRo Pro. And uh, so it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. Oh, sweet and lovely, a lady be good. Yes, lady be good to me. Well, I am so awfully misunderstood. Yes, lady be good. Be good to me. So the eye roll pro is a lot of fun that way. It's, it becomes a, like almost like a karaoke kind of a machine in this this way. But I recommend singers work with the eye reel pro to find their key. I work with a lot of singers as an accompanist, and I always used to have to get together with singers in rehearsals to work up the key to their songs, and we could start putting them just where they like them. So when they perform, they've got it in the most comfortable place for their voice. But now with the iReal Pro, you can switch to any key at the push of a button. And let me show you how that works. So I can put the song in any key to experiment with it and see where it fits my range better. Uh, I had it in the key of F, and that's a pretty good male key, typical male key for untrained voices like myself. Now, if you're a, a singer and wants it in a higher key, female vocalists say we go over here and change keys by going to the key change function. Let's put in an A flat. That might be a better key for a female voice. Let's just find out what it sounds like. Four, one, two. Oh, sweet and lovely, lady be good. Yes, lady be good. To me. So that's the idea. And I can go to any key. Let's just put it in something else. Uh, just put it in D. And see what happens there. Two, three, four. Oh, sweet and lovely lady, be good. Yes, lady, lady, be good to me. And such. So uh, it's really terrific this way. Let me get it back in the key of F where we were. You can just experiment with different keys. And you can just have fun with it. It becomes like a karaoke machine, like I say. A lot of fun to play with. The iReal Pro has such great possibilities for us. This transposing function also has a great opportunity for us to practice our chords. As you get better, and you want to test yourself to see how well you know your chords, you can go through the song with all the chords in the key of D and see how well you know your chords. You can keep shifting around the different keys to challenge yourself. If you're just learning your chords and new to playing by chord concept and learning how to read from fake books, either with my lessons in the series is called Playing from a Fake Book, or with somebody else's lessons. You, you want to learn your chords, of course, and learn how to put them with the melodies, how to harmonize the melodies with the chords. So this very first step is just to learn chords by themselves. Uh, it's not the end goal unless you're going to be playing with a band. If you're playing with a band, then you're just playing with chords, and you're not responsible for playing melody, we say. It's not your objective is to play melodies along with your chords. A lot of band players never really get proficient at playing melodies with chords because somebody else in the band is playing the melody, whether it's a singer or an instrument, and they just want to 
play the chords. Comp, we say they just want to comp, and that means to play rhythms in, in with the rhythm section, and you're not worried about melodies. And there's many ways to make chords, many ways to comp, to make rhythm patterns while you're playing. But our objective here, if you're studying with my lessons uh, about cocktail music and wanting to build cocktail arrangements and play from fake books, including the melody, we also have to start with just the chords and then find out how to use those chords to support the melody. So the way I teach it, and uh, I'm not sure how other teachers go about it, but I teach using the basic chords, using your four note chords, just like they have here in the iReal Pro. So we just have four notes, seventh chords, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished, they all have four notes. As opposed to playing with chord extensions, color tones, that means nines, thirteens, and elevens, and their alterations, either sharp or flat. When we're starting out to play fake book arrangements, all we need is these seventh chords, the four note seventh chords, and we either play them in the right hand with the melody over the chord, on the top of the chord, or we split them up into two hands. So we've got the chord in two hands and the melody on top. And those two methods, of course, we study in the playing from a fake book series that I have. Uh, so that's all we need here is the seventh chords, four note seventh chords to make that happen. And the altered tones, the color tones, nine, 13, and 11, they come on top of our chords because when we're playing for fake books, the melody's often, all the time, moving through the color tones. And it's just actually happenstance. You know, the, you, the composers aren't thinking, oh, it's gonna be a color tone here. It just, the way it works out. They write the melody and put the chords with it at the same time or later, and it just turns out that there's a color tone on top of the chord. And what does this mean? It means that you have a beautiful jazz chord when all you had to do is really learn your four note seventh chords, then the melody on top provides that color tone that makes your chord playing very rich sounding. It gives you a nice, simple sounding jazz chords because you got that color tone on top of the chords. Now, of course, we also learn how to add color tones within the chords, whether we're playing in this block chord style with the right hand and melody on top or with two-handed, open voicings, we add color tones sometimes in the middle of these chords to add uh, color, to add jazz color to our chords. But the point being, all we have to do is just concentrate on the four note seventh chords. And the rest happens all by itself. Now the real goal that you might be looking for if you're learning to play cocktail music with my studies is to put melody with the rhythm section. So here you have to either know the melody or read the melody. So you want to get a fake book that has the melody included in it and learn that melody really well and then play it with the rhythm section. Or you can put them side by side, put your fake book chart right next to the iReal Pro so you can follow the melody and have the rhythm section playing along. So here I'm gonna play the melody along with it. I know the melody to this song, so here I go, I'll play simply along with the rhythm section. Three, four, one, two, three, four. And so forth. So this is a song we study in the Playing with a Fake Book series. Uh, you might recognize it from that if you've worked with that series. Uh, but that's the idea. That's where you probably will be wanting to go to if you're going to use this as a practice tool for playing melodies with chords. 
But of course, if you're playing solo piano, uh, you're not working with a rhythm section and you're just learning how to play the song with the melody supporting things. <laughs> But the rhythm section gives us a lot of forward momentum in our practice and helps us with our solo playing also. And it's just a lot of fun, good plain fun. Now, if you're just playing chords and your goal is not to play melody or your function at the time is just to play chords behind a singer, a band, a horn player, you're in the band playing just chords, our four note seventh chords sound just great on the major seven, the minor seven, the minor seven flat five, the diminished chord. They sound really good, just like they are. You can invert them into any of the four inversions. There's four notes in each chord, so you can invert it into four different places. And they sound like simple jazz chords. They're, they're very nice, very pleasant on the ear. Slight jazz sound as opposed to playing a triad. A triad has no jazz sound to it. So we like to add at least a seven. But the chord we have to become aware of is the dominant seven chord. This like B flat seven, C seven, D seven, C seven. It's too plain sounding. Like here's a, a B flat seven. It's a very stark sound. It's very simple. It's too simple for our jazz use. We always like to add a color tone when we see a dominant seven chord. We like to add either 9 or 13. Those are our first automatic choices, 9 or 13, unaltered. You just play a 9 with the chord or a 13. There's, you know, a lot to learn about adding the color tones the right way. The rootless jazz chords, of course, are kind of the ultimate way to add our 9 and 13 chords. And um, the 11's in there, too. I don't mention the 11 because it's not used as often. The 11 is more of a special chord. It creates a sound that's a, it's a, a beautiful sound, but we don't use it frequently. Or the nine and 13 we use all the time. It's just uh, ubiquitous in our playing. So that's why I'm not mentioning the 11 in here. If you were going to play with a band or a singer or a rhythm section, and you were just going to play chords, it's a simple trick. You take any of your four note seventh chords and you raise the root one whole step, and that's going to give you a nine. Let's take the C7, for example. Here's our C7. I'll play the root in the left hand. So I want to turn this into a nine chord to make it more of a jazz chord. I raise the root wherever it is here. We're in root position, so it's going to go here. Now I've got a nice C dominant nine chord instead of a C7 chord. So I'm going to take it, uh, say, here in this inversion. I'm going to raise the root wherever it is. Here it goes up here. Let's take it down to the next inversion. I'm going to raise the root. And then down to this inversion, C7. Let's raise the root. C9. So we can do this on all of our seventh chords. Let's take it on a major seven chord. Take a look at it here. Major 7, I'm going to raise the root to make it a 9. Let's take it to an inversion of the major 7. I'm going to raise the root wherever it is up to one whole step. Do this again. F major 7, raise the root wherever it is, and it becomes F major 9 instead. Minor 7, like A minor 7. Raise the root wherever it is. Now it's A minor 9. Let's take it in an inversion. Down here is A minor 7. Raise the root wherever it is a whole step. One more time down here. Raise the root a whole step. So that's how it works. I started with the dominant chord because that's the one we really have to pay attention to. Again, I'm going to say that the major 7s and the minor 7s minor seven flat five, they're gonna sound great in any of their inversions or root position. But the one you've really gotta watch out for is this dominant chord. You're gonna to wanna to make that into a nine, at least a nine or a 13. So if you're playing 
just chords alone, think about turning that seven into a nine. So you're gonna raise the root a half a step. It's just gonna sound too plain if you don't do that. So keep that in mind. And let me point out here on the minor seven flat five, I don't recommend doing it on the minor seven flat five. Uh, the minor seven flat five sounds great just like it is. For plain standards, just leave the minor seven flat five alone. And the flat nine, if you don't know how to treat the flat nine yet, if you haven't looked at your minor jazz patterns or haven't understood how to do a flat nine on the chord, just ignore it. Just play an A7 for the time being until you do learn how to handle that flat nine. The flat nine's almost always connected to the E minor seven flat five. If you haven't studied the minor pattern yet, that's just a little, a little clue for you. You're gonna to wanna to look at those to understand what I'm talking about. Let me give you an example of this. I'm gonna play, the, I'll just play the, the first A section using nines instead of sevens. I'm gonna to try to play nines throughout the entire thing. So I'm gonna start with the F major seven, turn it into an F major nine. Let me show you something else you can do with the I Real Pro Rhythm section when you're working with it. You can start anywhere you like to by just going to the section you want to work on, hold it down, and you'll see the arrow here. So it'll start from this section of the song. Now also you can loop a section. Now looping means you're going to play one little section over and over. Let's say I just want to practice these four bars. So I've got this selected already. I'm going to go over here and select here and hold it down. And now you'll see it covered all four of these bars. So now I can push anywhere in these four bars and it's going to loop these so I can practice them. One, two, three, four. Now it's going to start over because that's what I selected. So I can just practice what I need to work on, just going to do it again. And when you want to stop, just go ahead and push stop, and then it will forget what you told it to loop. Now, as you get better at playing with the rhythm section, just with the chords to start with, you can then start playing rhythmically with the rhythm section. If you get to this point with it, where you have a little freedom because you've learned how to make the chords and learned how to put the chord in your right hand, left hand's got its, its function down, then you can play along with the rhythm section instead of just trying to keep up with it. And this is what we call comping, when you're creating rhythms as the rhythm section's playing. So I'll, I'll do a little of that for you here. I've got it set at 121. I'm gonna start it out and just, you'll hear the rhythmic way that I'm playing. Two, three, four. So here I would be comping, as we say. Comping means to play rhythmically with creating rhythm patterns with the band while it's playing. Here's something else. Let's talk about improvising for a moment. Improvising and making fills. They're really the same thing. When you're soloing, you're playing a solo throughout the chord changes. When you're playing a fill, you're playing for just a few beats in between melody notes. 
Now, I say there's two ways to solo, two concepts. You can play with chord outline or with scales. A chord outline means to play the notes in the chord, only the chord notes. So if I have an F major 7, those chord notes look like this. But I can continue up. I've got all the notes in the chord. I'm outlining the chord, playing notes singularly instead of together with solid block chords. So we can make our solos just with these chord outlines. We can also play with scales. Then we have to learn each scale that goes with each chord. But I say that there's an easier pathway to solo in if you just play with chord outlines. It gets you up and rolling real quick. Eventually you want to fuse them all together and use chord outlines and scales. Let me play for you here and demonstrate what that's like. So I'm going to go through the chords and just look at a chord outline let me start it here and just show you F major 7 using all the notes in any octave I want, B flat 7. Back to the F, the B flat again, A minor 7, the D7. And you can break them up any way you want to. You don't have to play them in order. Let me go back to the F major 7. You don't have to just go or go down. I can skip anywhere and go. Those are the notes of the chord, but I put them in a different order. I can go into another range with it. Jumping around wherever I want. And I can make rhythm patterns like this. Just notes from the chords. Let me start up the uh, rhythm section here and I'm going to play with just my right hand, not my left hand, and do chord outlines and show you a solo made using this concept. Three, four, one, two, three, four. can follow what I'm doing there. Just chord outlines. I'm not playing any scale notes. I'm using the chord outlines creatively, creating melodies with the notes of the chords. Now the way I just demonstrated playing with chord outlines, there was no chord being played. I was just playing a single melody note line in my right hand, like a horn player would do or a guitar player playing solo lines. Now I'm going to put a chord in my left hand to give it a bit of a fuller sound. But just watch my right hand, because this is what I want you to see. I'm just going to use chord outlines. No scales, just chord outlines. But I'll be putting a chord in my left hand to give it a fuller sound. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Thank 
idea of a little more natural play, the right hand just playing chord outlines. Now, if I was in real life action playing piano, I wouldn't just play with chord outline all the time. But as I say, it's a great way to get up and rolling, and it's a very melodic way to improvise. So I really recommend this to my students to get started with chord outlines. And then as you start to learn your scales that go with the chords, you fuse them together and you're combining all of the elements. Now there's a lot of videos giving instruction, great instruction, great details about all the aspects of the iReal Pro app, how to download it, all the wonderful things that it does. You start out by downloading the app uh, either from the Apple Store or if you have an Android device like this one here, you go to your Play Store and pay for it and download it. It's, it's around $20 or less than $20, somewhere around there. And you can have it on all of your devices for that price, your pad, your phone, and your computer. Once you've got it downloaded onto your device, then you're going to want to find out how to download all of these songs. Now, you don't get them immediately. You've got to follow a couple of steps to get everything downloaded to your computer. What you have to do is go to this globe icon. You push that, and after you push on that globe, you're going to see a page that looks something like this, and you're going to be looking for this instruction here that says quickly download main playlist. So you've got to go to here and push it right there. And it brings you up to this list here. You're going to be wanting to get this one that says jazz 1400. So you'll get 1400 songs. It's a combination of standards and jazz standards. The jazz standards you might not be familiar with, but you're going to see most of the standards that are popular, the ones that you know and you'll find in fake books. They're all contained in this Jazz 1400. So I'll push on that. And then it's going to lead me to a page here giving me a sample of what the songs are like. And then I go down here and push Import Song. And that will start the process of downloading them. I'm not going to push it because I've already got them downloaded on my device. And as I mentioned, if you go back to this Settings button, then that's going to take you to some very detailed tutorials about more in-depth description than I've given you here. I'm going to go through some of the basic functions that you'll be wanting to know if you start to work with the program. Uh, we just start by selecting a song. We've got this tremendous list of songs here. Let's pick one here. Lady Be Good, the Gershwin tune. And I'm going to point out some of the basic functions. What you'll mostly want to know is how these functions work down here. The play button is right here. This starts up the rhythm section, and this stops the rhythm section here. And these three bars here select the instruments. So we push the bars, and we have a choice of what kind of piano we want. We have a drop-down menu that lets us select the regular piano are a few different electric pianos, a vibraphone, or an organ. So let's just select piano. That's what we usually would want to be on. But since we're studying piano, we're actually going to roll it out. We can control the volume on the three different instruments. The bass also has a choice of basses. We've got electric bass, fretless bass, the organ bass. We're just going to put it on the acoustic bass. That's the default program. That's where it automatically sets itself. And we can turn up the volume or turn down the volume. So I'm going to put it up a little bit here. And then we've got the drums here. And the drums, we can also select how loud or soft we want it to play. Those are the three main things that we want as those instruments. We have the reverb. I don't use any reverb myself, but you can play around with that. You can actually play around with all of these different functions here and explore them for yourself. But these are the main three items that we want to be focused on. Another very important function for us that we're going to use on every song is the speed. And that's what this is here. This BPM means beats per minute. 
If you used a metronome, you might have seen BPM on your metronome too, beats per minute. It's set for 140 now. You can set it to any speed you want. Here's a slider. You can make it go slower, much slower, or you can make it go faster if you want. Put it anywhere you want to, and you can get more accurate by using this little plus and minus. And here, what's highlighted in blue, this is where we select what style we want our rhythm section to play in. Right now it's set on jazz medium swing. We can scroll here and get a variety of styles. When we're studying our cocktail piano lessons, we're playing mostly in swing and ballads and bossa novas. That's what we're studying when you work with my lessons. So we've got medium swing, medium up swing, slow swing, up tempo swing. And we can adjust the tempos on these with this beats per minute button down here. And then if we want to go to uh, bossa nova, we've got bossa nova in here. So we can select a bossa nova rhythm. And then if we want to go with a ballad, we've got our ballad selections here. And over here, this allows us to control how many times through we want the chord changes to play. Right now it's set on five times through. We can push this button and then we can select if we want it to play more times or fewer times. And over here is where we can change the key. And this is a very important function for us, very useful. We can put the song into any key we want to. I just tap on that and here's 12 different keys that pop up so I can choose the key I want to play in. Put it in C over here and then all of the chords change into the key of C with a touch of a button. I'm going to put it back in our default key, the key of F. Then when I'm ready to play, I just tap on my start button here and the rhythm section starts up. And the bouncing ball here, it lights up so you'll always know where you are in the song. Now, as I mentioned, this is a very sophisticated program, very powerful, has a lot of possibilities. What I've done here is just go over some of the very basic functions, a very small part of the app, but it's probably the part that's used the most, what I've just showed you there. Yeah, that's the part we'll use for our practice. But there's so many different parts of it. You can go online. There's a lot written about it, and there's a lot demonstrated on YouTube. And if you go into this settings button, you're going to find out that there's a whole list of tutorials and guides that will introduce you and show you how to use different parts of the program. I'll talk here briefly about how to download the program onto your phone, your pad, or your computer, but you can go here to the user guide and video tutorials, and they're going to give you some real in-depth, precise instructions how to get everything downloaded.